And once upon a time, uh, I am, as you can just probably tell just from watching me in the moment, I have, I think I've never been clinically told that I was, but I'm a little bit ADHD, I think. I go here, there, and everywhere. And so that, you know, I'm the guy that sees the squirrel, and I watch the squirrel. Literally, there are squirrels outside my window at the church. It's not a good thing for somebody who has ADHD. So these things that I'm talking about are things that have helped me not miss the opportunities that God has for me. Now, this is kind of the things we're going to be talking about. Now, some of you are going to say, ah, one, two, or three. That doesn't really interest me. Hold on. Don't judge it yet because you might find something that will help your ministry. These are the things that we're going to be looking at. This is Tom's twin brother. And we're going to be looking at taskmasters, which how do you schedule the things that you're going to do, calendar systems, information organizers, what kind of tech can you use to enhance your sermon or lesson prep, Bible study software, social media tools, software, and then some extra stuff. And what I would like to to have you do is kind of focus. If you're a note taker, that's fine if you want to take notes. But let me tell you, there's going to be more than we can possibly talk about in the handy dandy PDF that I'm going to email you. So if you you just want to sit back and relax, if there's something that does catch your mind, you want to jot it down, I encourage you to write that down um, because you can look at it in the meantime. When I got into trying to find how to organize my life, what I did is I made uh, the bad decision of trying to do everything like trying to have a whole bunch of systems. And what happens when you have a whole bunch of systems is it doesn't, it doesn't work. So what I encourage you to do is, is if you see things and you're like, man, this is really great, this is really wonderful, focus on a couple of them. Try them out, incorporate them into your ministry and into your life, and go from there. Don't try to do everything in this or you're going to literally blow your mind. It's taken me years to, to get a system that works for me. I think this will help you much faster because a lot of the stuff, I'm going to give you hints on what I think, and, and I'm just one guy, but some of the things that's really helped me. So um, think about that. What is really, what's necessary? What are you thinking about for tech in your life right now? What is God saying to you about, hey, you need to do this? And and focus on that. Keep the PDF. There'll be a lot of stuff on there that you can do later. But with that, let's just, uh, let's just go to the task managers. Task managers are what, are what they are. I've listed a couple of them on here. Uh, how many Apple people are there? Okay, how many of you use Siri? Do you use Siri? Okay, hey Siri, remind me when I leave this place to call my wife. Hey Siri, remind me tomorrow night at 9 a.m. Okay, just tell me what you want to be reminded about. Call my wife after I leave this place. Hey Google does the same, or okay Google does the same thing. Wonder list, simple, free. Thank you. So when I leave here today, it's going gonna, it's gonna to put a geofence around this place, and it's going to remind me to call my wife. Crazy things that it can do. You, you can say, remind me when I leave the church. It'll, know where, it'll learn where church is at. Remind me when I get to work. It'll remember that kind of stuff. Wonder list is a list that you can organize all kinds of to-dos, put it together. Evernote, you can do to-dos in it. Evernote is like a catch-all. Anybody familiar with that Evernote? Okay. You can, you, the only thing it's missing is a calendar. It would be almost a perfect app, but it's great for information catching. That's what I use it for. If I had to pick one program, and it is not free, unfortunately, but there's a reason for it, and that's Tick Tick. Tick Tick can organize your life. It's amazing. It's robust. It's it's got a Pomodoro do timer for the computer, so and on your phone, so you can. We're going to talk about that. It's great and wonderful. The next thing on here, if you're a tactile person, right? You know, maybe you don't like a lot of tech. Maybe you need to write things down. Um, Tom, you can put you know the chisel and the stones away. We got it better. The rocket book that you just signed here. Um, I, I converted David to it. If you don't know what a rocket book is, I'm going to introduce you. The rocket book is like the greatest thing for pastors who take notes or people who t- write. They like that. What it does instead of having a whole bunch of half-filled notebooks, because what is it about that? You look at a notebook you're like, oh, it's half-filled, and you become kind of a snob on it. This thing you can write in it with the friction pen here that comes with it. This is about 25 bucks. You can take notes. Now look at this. It does not smear. When I take a a microfiber with wet, rub it, it'll come right off. You can use this hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. Now here is where the tactile and the touchy-touchy gets tech fun. You'll notice here, there is an app for this. It's, It's a Rocketbook Everlast app. And there's little symbols. I've got my Evernote 
rocket book scans. Hello, sir. I've got my OneNote sermon prep. I've got my Evernote and different. I've got my iMessage so I can text my wife something. I got an email and I got OneDrive. At the bottom of each one of these pages is a little bitty symbol. So when you open up that rocket app and you take a picture of this, it files it or, or puts it wherever you send it. It's great and wonderful. So if you're one of those people that like to digitize your sermon notes, uh, but you also like to write, you can have all your study in this, and you can reuse it over and over again. It's great. It's wonderful. And there's different sizes. So you can have a, an actual, like, big size. You can have a pocket size. You can get, like, four of these pens for six bucks. Um, with that, sir, can I get your email address, sir? And, and hit, I'm going to send you a PDF. On, you can get it on Amazon. You can get it at Walmart. Um, this one right here is about $25. Uh, I noticed there's one at Walmart a little bit bigger. I think there's four sizes now. And I, I got all of them because that's, I don't learn lessons. And I just use this one, basically. So, um, wonderful. Great. Um, what, one thing that I do <laughs> is sometimes you just don't want to stop and put a to-do note in your phone, right? So, I will put a circle in my thing, like I'm, if I'm listening to a conference, I'll circle. I know with that circle, that means that that's a to-do. At the end of the day, I go through there and I mark those off and put it in my phone. So that's how you can use a tactile system with a, with a, or a paper system with a digital system. Calendar systems. Okay. Again, use whatever. If, if, if you're in Apple, you can use Apple. I'm one of those weirdos that, you know, I'm like... Uh, I wear, I would wear Star Wars clothing, to, Star Wars clothing to like a Star Trek convention, right? Because I am like, I hate Macs. I don't know why, I just don't like them. I'm a PC guy, but I hate Android phones. I've used them, I'm not, they, they work. So I am a PC guy with a Apple phone, an Apple watch. I also have a Kindle run Android Fire. So what's great about these is these calendars can all tie together. So when you put something on something, it goes to all of them. So they, they, they play well together. Outlook, if you're a Windows person, you can get your emails, tasks, calendar. My only preface with Outlook is it's really finicky and it's kind of hard to set up. I've got links on how to do that. If you're an iPhone fan, Calendar 5 is amazing. You just type and it schedules. It also, if, if, how many of you set like five alarms to wake up in the morning of you like that? This thing gives you like, as, like five reminders, like an hour before, two weeks before. So you can set up multiple reminders for things that are important. That's what I like about that. So any questions before we go on for task managers or calendar systems? If we're going fast, it's in the PDF, so I apologize. Nothing? Going once, going twice? All right. Now, what if Marie Kondo came to your office, your church, your house, and she wanted to punch you in the face because you had so much clutter, so much paper, so much stuff? I am not a minimalist, and she would hate me. But let's say you got a lot of things that you want to, you want to keep a control on. you got papers, you got sermons, you've got insurance policy papers, you've got warranties, you've got all these things in your life. This doesn't have to be with the church or your ministry. It can be with everything. These things help you do that. Um, you can do Google Notes. It's okay. You can do Google Keep if you're in, in the Android fan. Bear is, an, uh, is iOS. It's more of a type one. My personal favorite is Evernote. I have 4,000 and some notes. When I go to Sam's, I don't have to put in my head what the serial number is for our ink, for our printer. It's there. Um, I put our tax-exempt form. So if I go to a store and I forget to bring the tax-exempt thing, I can print it off or email it to them. Everything, I'm, we're going through adoption, my wife and I. Every form known to man that they want you, which is a million of them, is in there. Anything that you think you might use later on in life can be put in there and filed in different things. I have a, a, a getting things done uh, a section in there where if there's things that are pertinent to what I'm doing now, I file it in there. You can have a sermon one in there. So like, let's say you're going along and you're like, hey, this is going to really help me with my sermon. You can send it to that, that notebook so it's all there. You can clean it out as you're done with it. Google Keep, if you're a Post-it Note fan, you'll love Google Keep. It's like a bunch of little Post-it Note things that you can search. So Evernote, my personal favorite, there's free versions, there's paid versions. It works on everything except stone tablets. Sorry, Tom. Any questions on that? All right. Now we get to the fun stuff. 
Get your Spurgeon on. Sermon and lesson prep. Okay. We do, uh, those of us who do uh, sermons and pastors or teachers, we do a lot of these things here will help you collect everything that you need for your sermon, okay, or for your lesson. OneNote is my app of choice. It works on everything. Imagine for a moment if this was a board covered with glue, and you could literally throw anything at it. This would be a OneNote page, okay? So you can put songs, literal songs. You can put pictures. You can put to-dos in there. You can put paste in scriptures. You can paste, you can type. And what happens is every time you type something new or you paste something new, it becomes its own movable object. So let's say you're studying for a sermon and you're, you're just, you're throwing everything on the page. You're not, anything that you think God wants you, that's come off the commentaries or your personal study with, you put it on there. When it comes time, you're studied out, you can, you can organize this and it flows. So it's an amazing way to work, a visual way to work. Drafts, this is an iPhone app. It's also an Apple Watch app. It is amazing. It's, it's, you can talk to the thing, and it, it can understand me, believe it or not. Uh, I, I need to give my wife the app on her phone so she can understand me, I guess. You do it in marriage counseling. Here, just get this app. But anyway, I'm, I'm driving down the road, coming here for this session, and I've already studied for my sermon this week. And I, what I like to do is I like to listen to what other pastors have to say, a couple of them, on what I'm preaching on. And so I was listening to John MacArthur on the One Place app that I'm going to show you. And as I was going along, he said something about my topic. That I thought, oh, that's really neat. I'm going to remember that. So I got, while I'm driving, hey, remind me about that John MacArthur thing. Does it perfectly, stores it, it's on my phone. And I know to check it when I get back. Works great. Wonderful. I also use it on my phone when I just want to, when I'm, I've got, you got, maybe you got something that you want to put in your lesson and you don't have a way to type it and it's a whole bunch of words and you're like, and it just flips it out. So these are for organization. We're going to look at one note later. And I think if you get anything out of anything, if you're a teacher or preacher, I really think you should look into one note. So let's do some thoroughly righteous Bible study. How about this? Here's some of the things that I've found. Tom, Tom's family member there. Logos. Logos is one of those things that if you don't want to spend anything, you can get value out of it. They got a free, even a desktop uh, uh, program. They got an iPhone, Kindle, uh, you name it, you can find it. If you, want, if you want to make the most robust system of Bible study you can and, want, and you got money to spare, you can get very deep and in-depth with that. You can spend a lot of money, but they're good tools. But it, there's free portions that you can do, and there's absolutely great stuff that's on there for that. The next one is eSword. Anybody heard of eSword? Yeah, eSword is free. It used to be kind of a, st- a pain because you had to install the main program, and then you had to install the, all the extra things. Now it's just in one download. There's a lot of things that are out of print and out of copyright, but when does God's Word go out of style? It doesn't. So all those good, good old commentaries, they're still great and wonderful. They're in there. It's, it's a, you can even build your sermon in it. There's a sermon editor. It's free. Again, all these links and tutorials are right here in this PDF that I'm going to email you. The next thing I want to talk about is the Net Bible. Does anybody know anything about that? Any of you ever been to Bible.org? One of the first places for the Bible on the internet. Problem was, they wanted to put Scriptures online. At that time, there was a problem with the publishers because the publishers didn't want their stuff that people were buying put online. And so what they did is they got a group of scholars, Greek and Hebrew, together, and they created the New English Translation, which is a great, faithful translation. What's great about it is if you're like me and you do sermon outlines and you want to put stuff online, they're copyright. You just tell them. You can, you can do a whole book series and, and list it online for free. Doesn't, you can write a book and listen. You don't have to pay anything. You don't have to worry about breaking copyright laws. It's great. It's wonderful. There's a free app for it. Um, there's a Bible. So you can go to uh, netbible.org, and there's a study site that is really great. It's, it's wonderful. Uh, it enables me to share my sermons without having to kick out God's Word from it. The next thing is kind of silly, and you may not think that this might help you, but it is extremely helped me. It's the Pomoro Do timer or the Pomoro Do tactic. Anybody familiar with that? As I said earlier, I have a real hard time focusing sometimes. And 
what I have, I found, when I was looking at this and praying about this, I, I found this. And what this is, is this is a tactic that enables you to focus on something and then be able to go move from it for a short period of time and come back. The way it works, you can do it with anything. You don't need anything special other than an egg timer. You work for 25 minutes on something. You take a five minute break. So what happens with me? Let's say that I'm working on something and I've got a couple of little things. And you know how you want to check the internet or you want to check that you, you want to do all these little things and you don't, you're not looking at what's really important. Your sermon, you're going to be preaching to your people. God expects you to be ready and you're, you're flipping through Yahoo or you're going through. How do you defeat that? You get this timer. 25 minutes, you're trying to beat the clock. Can I get this page uh, formatted? Can I get this, this verse studied? And you go from there for 25 minutes. You take a five-minute break. Go to the bathroom, get a drink, get up, walk around. Come back, do another 25. Take another five-minute break, 25, five-minute. And then you take a 10 or a 15-minute after that. What I have found is I don't have as many roadblocks that I used to have. I ha- I, my, my children's sermons. For whatever reason, you'd think with me that children's sermon would be easy. But uh, I have trouble with that. And there's been times when I'll take that break and I'll come back and I'm like, oh, I, I see how this is. You can also um, set you can also set how many Pomora do's you think something's going to accomplish. Like it's going to take me to do what I'm going to, to work on this Wednesday night lesson. It's going to take me six Pomora do's. And so you can schedule, you can and use your time. It's helped me be more efficient. It's helped me to have days off, right? And it, if God's word is important, it's important for it to focus on it. But my favorite timer of all is the Pomora do, no, the Productivity Challenger Timer. And it is hilarious. This guy built it and for himself but it's this app that's based on communism. I know, I'm not, communism is bad. Don't, but what it is, is you do these, you work these things and you get up levels. You go from, you know, poor plebe to, you know, to Udark or whatever. And it, it, but it helps you keep track of your time. It shows you how you spent your time for the week, the month, the year, the day. You can, you can track your, what projects you're doing. It just helps me focus on what is important. While at the same time getting the little things that need to be done but aren't quite as so important as, as the essential things. There's links for that in there. It has really helped me save time. Okay, oh, there's some other things actually that I need. Bible.is, does anybody know that? It's an app. You can also go online and get it. What it does is it reads the Bible to you as you read along in multiple languages. Um, or and, yeah, and there's d- dramatic ones, and you, it's it's just really nice. So you can plug it into your car, plug it into your headphones, and the scripture will be read to you. Highly recommend it. If you want to listen to a whole bunch of Christian preaching, OnePlace.com. You can go there. You, you know, you can find all the guys that you, that you know and love. GotQuestions.org. Anybody been there? You know, somebody asks you a weird question or you're studying something, you want to see somebody else's perspective, there's like 500,000 questions answered on there. And they're all, I've never seen anything in there that I thought was doctrinally questionable. Gotquestions.org, it's a great place. CCEL.org, it's a the ethereal uh, Christian library. I, I can't quite remember how it is, but you go on there and you can get old books in PDF form. Like one of my favorite books of all time, which I was introduced to from this, is Richard Baxter's Reformed Pastor. If you're a pastor and have not read that, it's really convicting, really great. So ccel.org, you can download all the out-of-print classics on PDF and you can take them with you. Um, Did I talk about Creative Commons? I didn't. I didn't. Okay, yeah. Creativecommons.org. This is what I like. I, I want to share my stuff. I want to give it away, right? But I don't want anybody to take my sermons and make profit off of it or charge it or do anything with it. What Creative Commons does is it allows you to put a copyright free on your material. And you can tell people that they can reuse it, and you can also set re- restrictions. You can say you can reuse it, but you can't change it. You can reuse it and change it you, with attribution. Um, you, can, you can use it for whatever you want. You can you can. But what this does is it protects your material. So, but I put that on every one of my um, lessons that I put online so that any, anybody wants to use it, they're free to. But at the same time, I protect my intellectual property. And there's links for that on there as well. Okay. Any, any questions on this so far? I know we're going through a lot, but there's a lot that I'd like to share, so. That's why the PDF is here. Okay, I'm too old for this. 
<laughs> All right, this is where we get the fun stuff. Okay, how many here have your churches on Facebook? Okay, how many of you use that on a regular basis? Okay, well, good. Let me talk about some things that you want to do with Facebook. One thing you want to do is you, you want to post things other than just Bible verses and service times or prayer requests. You also don't want to post at the same time. Post at 8 o'clock in the, in the evening. Post at midnight if you're up. Post That way it keeps people who check your Facebook at different times will we'll see different content. Um, put on the, Look at what small businesses are doing. Small businesses, it's hard to be a small business and stay, in, stay open now. So whatever a small business is doing, check out what they're doing, to, to how they're getting their message out. Just because it's for a small business, you might get an idea. Do, uh, do quizzes, fun trivia. Keep, keep up on you know, National Donut Day or whatever it is, just something fun. And you know, just something to keep people engaged. Any way that you can use it to share Christ. How many of you f- uh, Facebook live stream your services? Oh, yeah? Okay. Well, we're going to... Uh, that, that's, that's too bad. Yeah. I'm going to show you real quick an easy how we uh, stream Facebook Live. Now, technically, I got my iPhone here. And I could plug this thing into it using this. And we would have a face, Facebook Live set up. This is a powered hub. This is a Blue Yeti. It is an amazing, you can get this thing for like 80 bucks, I think. If you do any kind of audio at your church, this will revolutionize. Like if you do podcasts or you you do any kind of, I mean, even if you do vocal things, you got people who sing. You hook this up to your iPhone or to your iPad, which is what we use, it dramatically improves the sound. You don't sound like you're in a tin can. Um, You'll notice the parts of this, every part, this right here is how you, it's a USB to lightning. This is the hub. The hub plugs into a power source that powers this, and through this cable, it, it powers it. Highly, highly recommend that you Facebook Live. You do not have to have a lot of money to do that. You can use an old iPhone. Yes, sir. We come straight over to work. Yeah, that's great. That's even better. Um, with this, it's portable. Well, you can take anywhere. I could live stream here if I had the internet connection to do it. But I've got the listing of everything that I use for that. Um, it's great and wonderful. One thing I'm going to tell you, though, and this is very important because I really found this out, and this is serious. <laughs> we, we're adopting, and we were talking to our therapist on Wednesday night, and I realized we were talking to her uh, on, in the sanctuary like an hour after we had had a Wednesday night service. And our deacon called and said, you're Facebook living. <laughs> so be careful. Make sure that whoever's in the soundboard, it's because, you know, it's like, it's been an hour, Jim. What have you been doing? No, just, but no, but I mean, be, you want to be cautious to, that, the, that somebody shuts it off or you'll be live streaming. Also, this is, I just totally remember. If you want security at your church and you want to do it cheap, WiseCam, W-Y-Z-E-C-A-M, 25 bucks. And they are great, and they are wonderful. Um, well, I'm going to do something fun. No, I can't. Anyway, I, I could look at my church office right now. I can look at the sanctuary right now. Um, that's how, what, we, what we use for our nursery is we got a little Kindle Fire tab, and we put the WiseCam app on it, and they can watch in the nursery our service through a little Kindle Fire for like $75. Said and done. The, the Kindle Fire is 39 bucks, I think. The Wise Cam is 25 bucks. You can live stream to your nursery as long as you have the internet connection. It's great. It's wonderful. It's easy. I've got one in my front room. I've got one in the church. Uh, the other night, uh, I was, last night, in fact, 11 o'clock at night, I'm working all this stuff and I get a notification that there's somebody in my office. It's kind of odd at 11 o'clock at night. And so I get on my Wise Cam and it's, what, it's my, my brother doing the bulletins. So it, it'll, if the fire alarm, it'll recognize a fire alarm and it'll send you an alert. There's ones that you can move and scan and that's like 30 bucks. They're great. They're wonderful. Wise cam. Try it out. I need to add that later. Um, I've included some social media strategies on there, uh, some links to that. 
uh, how to never waste a sermon, six ways to reuse it. Um, there's a pro to, prochurchtools.com. They have some free stuff on there. So look that up. Also, how many of you are using Uversion to advertise your services? Uversion is the largest Bible app in the world. When we started live streaming our or doing uh, Uversion our services, there were three churches in Wichita using it, including ours. You go in there, you set the time of the service, you set up an account, which I show you in here how to do. You go in there, you say, okay, we're going to be preaching on this uh, at this time. It shows you on a map. They can get directions to your church. People are new in town. They look at that. Wow. In a church of, in a town of hundreds of thousands, there's only three churches. When you, and when a little church is doing that, that means something. They come to your church. They can join the service. It logs them into the, the scripture that you're at. It's great. It's wonderful. It's free. It's available for Apple, Android, and on the web. All right. Uh, how many of you know that if you're a church, you have a Google business page? Did you know that? Claim your church page. Go on there. There's a process. I'll show you on here in the notes. Claim it. That means when somebody reads a review, you can say, hey, thank you for doing that. Or, hey, I'm sorry that, you know, Joe Bell, head at the piano, spun. We don't remember that in service. We had somebody that didn't even come to our service, gave us four stars. I'm like, hey, thanks for that. When did we see you? No, I didn't. But be Christ-like. But it, you, can, you can answer questions. Tell your people about it. I've had my people answer questions. When's your services? Put stuff like that on there. Put pictures on there. Put, and get control of your business so that you can respond when people leave reviews. Um, if you have a church Facebook page, which I said you must, you should, uh, I've got you some, there's the ultimate church Facebook page guide. Um, I've got outreaches, church Facebook 101 on there. Tom Rayner how, talking about how to, to maximize your church's Facebook page. Look at those things. It doesn't take a lot to do that. Also, how many of you have ever seen a very bad header picture on a Facebook page? It looks horrible, right? Yeah, so here's what it says. Uh, come to our event. It is, it's Friday night at... No more worries, because I love you. I've included this in the PDF. If you copy this and you can scan it into your computer, you put it into a PowerPoint. I use PowerPoint to put all my pictures together. Anything in the red is what shows up on the computer. Anything that is blue is what shows up on the phone. So guess what? Put, make sure everything that's important goes in here, not in here. You can make really nice, professional-looking Facebook pages or headers just by following this little guideline. It'll look worlds different, and I'm going to show you some programs that'll help you do that. So again, scan this into scan, when print this out, scan it into your computer as a 100% size, and paste it into a a PowerPoint. And what you do is you just go and you make a box and you fit your picture into that box. And I use this over and over and over and over. It is so helpful. Makes you, makes you look like somebody's paying attention, because you are. All right, let's get to the fun stuff. Sorry, Mr. Wesley. You need these programs, brothers and sisters. Free worship. Anybody know what that is? Have you, how many of you heard of easy worship? Free worship is a lowered version of, of kind of like that. Not as many bells and whistles, but way better than PowerPoint. I've got, that's, it's free. It's free. Paint.net. I use this, every one of my pictures that I've done on here, I've used on paint.net. It's totally free. I've included a tutorial in there. If I can learn this, you can do layers. It is great. It is wonderful. It will change how you do things. Um, if you are, if you're one of those people that likes to get really deep on things and you like uh, Photoshop, look at GIMP. I got links for that in there as well. How many of you get tired of paying a whole bunch of money for Word? An office, although you can get discounted. LibreOffice, it'll open Word files. It'll open PowerPoint files. It's free. It's an office suite. Also, there's um, open office as well. Totally free. You want to do world-class audio, where you can do audio effects or record. You can use Audacity is great with that little thing there for podcasts. You can do all kinds of weird, cool effects with it. Um, Get it. In order to output to MP3, there's a file you have to download. I've even covered you on that. It's the link is in there. Push bullet. I love push bullet. How many of you got something on your phone or on your computer and they're not on the other and you want them on the other? And you're like, eh, 
yeah, you know, Hulk smash. Push bullet allows you to do that like that. Push bullet, and it, it's there's another one called Portal. You can it, push bullet is an app. It's also a Chrome extension for Chrome. Chrome is great and wonderful. If you're not using Chrome, you need to use it. I can send a picture from from my phone to my Chrome in seconds. I can send a file. I can send a PowerPoint. If it's a big file, use Push Bullet's bigger brother, Portal, and it'll do it over Wi-Fi and it'll send huge files. And it'll, it'll just come through the website and download to your computer or come to your phone. Um, they're free, totally free. Genius Scan. If you like PDFs, you could take any. You have paper. I could. I could take my phone out right now and turn this into a PDF with Genius Scan. It's it's great. You can reorder. You can put things in. If you do a lot of curriculum that you share, or it's just great. Yeah, you got documents that you sign. Like somebody says, hey, you got to sign a document. Take a picture of it and Genius Scan. Email it to them. It's a PDF. They can open it anywhere. That one costs. But it's well worth it. I think it's like four bucks. It may be actually eight now, but it's it's so worth it. And all these are generally they're they're multi. You can use them on multiple things. It'll tell you where you can use them on, in here. How many of you have seen something on YouTube that you'd like to use in a sermon, but you don't want to stream it from YouTube? Okay, I got links on here. Clipconverter.cc, uh, and then there's another link on there. You go in there, you put that in there, and it downloads it to your computer. Just be careful that you're not stealing. Just be careful. Obey copyright laws. Oh, here's something that's free for you. One tab. How many of you use Chrome? Chrome is amazing. Okay, but how many of you have got so many Chrome tabs open that your computer sounds like it's trying to give birth to a Mercedes? And, and you're like, oh, but, but I opened that tab four months ago, and I'm sure that I'm going to go back and read that about, about dandelion wine. Or, it's so, so interesting. Well, one, what one tab or, does is you click the little extension, and it takes all those tabs and takes like 80% of your memory and frees it up, and it puts it on a clickable list on your one tab. And every time you add something to that list, it just gets a little longer, but they're just, they're just links. They're not pages. Saves you, it's free, saves you a whole bunch of things. Um, there's a, a read it aloud. I'm just thinking of things that I use that I didn't put in here. There's a read it aloud tab. You can click read it aloud. It'll read it. Um, there's, I've got one, I use a Kindle. There's a, an, an app that you can use that, that'll, you can check your Kindle notes from that. There's tons of things that you can do that can help you. Uh, if you want free virus software, AVG. Um, just make sure that you don't click the paid because every once in a while they'll tell you that. It does what you need it to do. Um, so just, just remember that. Gotcha. All right, now we get to go to the fun stuff. The extras. So we're going to talk about how to schedule sermons, lessons. I'm going to give you a 2019-2020 holiday calendar, the Christian year calendar, some ideas for planning your lessons and sermons, how to set up one note to prepare your lessons and sermons, and then just some extra, extra stuff. So um, I am a big proponent of planning what you're going to preach. And so these things, that I, these extras, I think they're worth the price of admission. If they're not... You can't sue unless you're Body Holly, and then you can only Peggy sue. But so let's just look at it. So, how to schedule sermons? One thing uh, you'll note in your when you get this, you'll notice somewhere that I have included a little tentative sermon and lesson schedule. There's enough on here for a little over a month. Print enough out of these to do however long you want to plan. I, a quarterly is is what I do, and then for every quarter that you're going to plan. Pick a day by yourself where you're disconnected from whatever it is and go out and plan. I've, there, I've set this up for four services. So technically, if you teach Sunday school, Sunday night sermon, uh, Sunday morning sermon, Sunday night lesson, and Wednesday night. You put the description, you know, and the day of the week in your notes. Here's the things that you, you need to think about, what you need to take with you when you do that. You need to take your calendars. And when I mean calendars, I mean your association calendar, your personal calendar, your school calendar, your town calendar. Um, the holiday calendar, and get all these calendars together so that you can see that it's probably not a good idea on this, this Sunday when you're preaching through the life of Christ to preach on the ten lepers when it's Mother's Day, as I did one time. But that was just because I 
refused to preach a Mother's Day sermon, and I paid, oh, I paid for that. Even though I told them that their complexions were much better than the ten lepers, they still did not. So don't, don't do that. Okay, so take this stuff, get a, take with you a Bible, uh, maybe a concordance, uh, maybe a Bible dictionary. Um, maybe if you, if you have what you need for, uh, if you know what you preached on in the last quarter or the last year, bring that with you and, and start thinking about where God's leading you, what's going on in the life of your church, um, and, and do this. Uh, some other things. Schedule your... If you know you're going to do a baptism, if you know you're going to do the Lord's Supper, how many times have you, this used to be a problem. First, you know, first week of the month, walk into the, oh, we're having Lord's Supper. Schedule it. So it's there. You don't have to worry about these things. Um, schedule your, your weddings. How many times have you, have you had a wedding in advance and then something comes up and you, you forgot it and you've got something else that's wanting to schedule it. Schedule, if you're married and you're in the ministry, schedule your dates. Schedule your, so when somebody says to you, hey, James, can you take my pet turtle out for me because I'm going to be on vacation? Sorry, Bob, I can't. I have something on my calendar. And that something is my wife who is important to me. So schedule those things. They don't need to know what's on your calendar. Also, a liturgical calendar might be good, so you can see what's going on. I've included uh, the Christian year in there that shows you how it breaks up. Schedule for Annie Armstrong, for Lottie Moon. Yeah, Viola Webb. Yeah, I, I've got, here it shows you what days these are on. This is in the, so you can be ready for that. Um, here's the, the Christian year is all there. Do that, do that, do that. Okay, now I'm going uh, to show you how to use OneNote. Because this, to me, has changed my teaching and my ministry and my life. Because it's, it's given me back time. So I want to share this with you because I think it's very important. Remember I said earlier that OneNote is kind of great for doing sermons. I'm going to show you how I set it up. I have a OneNote sermon prep notebook. Okay, This is on my phone. This is on my Anything that I have, I can access this calendar or this, this notebook. The way, so this is everything that I'm looking at into the future is here. So when you do that planning calendar and you know where you're going to be preaching, make tabs for this. Why? Because if you're reading something, oh, hey, that'd make a great illustration when I talk about be ready now when I, I preach on uh, Matthew 25 and the, the, ten, the ten virgins. Uh, remember, so I've got everything that I got. As you can see here, look at, look at how I did my lesson. I got my taskmaster, my calendar system, information organizer, sermon prep, all this stuff. My go bag, which I didn't decide to do because I kind of showed you that. But all this stuff I just put in here. And this is what I made. I built out of this my PDF that you're going to be getting. So this is the name of the notebook. These are kind of like your subjects, Right? These are the pages in that notebook. You're going to see, I've got in one of these tabs, I have an entire series on Ephesians in that. But I've got all my sermons on that right here in that. This search bar, this is, I've got, I, over the course of 10 years, I've preached mostly through the life of Christ. I'm to Matthew chapter 25. I, I do it, you know, about a quarter every year, quarter or two. I can go in there to my Life of Christ notebook, and let's say that I'm going to be talking about the temple. Jesus cleared out the temple. I type in temple. Everything that I've written, studied, talked about is listed right here. I want to know what I've said about Zacchaeus, Pharisees, whatever. It's right here. I know that I used a quote from Tom Edwards, but I don't know where in all the 200 and some sermons I did. I typed Tom Edwards. And so this is the page content. Again, one note is, is like you can put everything in this. I, you can see the links. I put those in there. You can put pictures, music files. You can put Word documents in here you can, where you can actually see them or you can click on them. And this goes with you everywhere. Everywhere. And you can move it around and you can organize it. And those are the page tabs. You can see that. Okay, this is how, this is how one of my, so this is my Ephesian series. And you can see, you can scroll up and you can scroll down. I've got Ephesians number 16. Number, uh, these are all in one notebook. Right now, that's Ephesians 5.19. This is all my study that I have done on Ephesians 19. 
I put my verse up at the top. As I'm going along, as I'm doing my praying, as I'm doing my own reflections, as I'm asking myself questions about the text, if I'm doing word studies based on, on this, this verse, everything I do, I put in here. Everything. So when I'm done and I'm studied out, I can organize this, get rid of whatever I don't want. And uh, there's a place for that too, because I never, never throw away any study. I never throw it away. Um, so if you look at my, I've got my scripture here. That's one tab. i got my children's sermon, my intro. And then I've broken down each of the verses. And then in verse 19 here, I've had sub pages. Because what I'll do is I'll break down the verse itself. So speaking to on hymns and spiritual and singing. So anything that deals with that, I can drop it into individual. When it comes time, I can organize that. Um, I've not organized my notes. Um, and when I'm done, I have my application, how it all ties together. My miscellaneous is all the study that I didn't use. And what I also do is, like, if there's a, a big section that I did of, like, maybe I did a topic study, I'll save that entire section for that topic and put it in miscellaneous. And then I can break it out so I don't lose anything. This is what a... It's done. See it? Be filled. Who, who is the filling for? All believers. And I've organized this. Then what I do is this. I have a, a, a I've created my own sermon file notes for, in Word. And I take and I paste these where they go. And then I go in and what I do is, is I organize it even further. So what this allows you to do is this allows you to go through a massive amount of content. It allows you to go through a revision when you take stuff, what you're going to include on this, and then it lets you look at your stuff again when you revise it. It is extremely helpful. I cannot tell you how much this has changed my study and, and my ministry. So I'm going to go over some, I'm going to kind of tell you how you can tie this all together. Also, here's this, there's seven steps to pul pulpit freedom on here. Um, Stephen Rutledge, I think at Rummage, wrote a book on how to plan your preaching. This is basically the core of it. I listed that book link on there. And this will help you. Seriously, if, you, if you're going from, if, if you preach a, a sermon on Sunday and you wake up on Monday and you have to think what you're going to preach on, that sucks. With, with a, a preaching, teaching calendar, you can coordinate things. You can, you can find what songs you're going to sing. You know, take your hymnal with you. So if you're, if, as you're studying, oh, I, this would be a great song. So you can coordinate with your leaders, your your Facebook team. They can have stuff in advance. So they don't have to do everything. Boom, 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 boom. If they know that you're going to be preaching through the book of Jude they, in a month, they can have PowerPoint slides. They can have, they can have things ready for Facebook. Your people, you can tell them kind of what the, you're going to be dealing with. And your music people can be working on it. It will help you. It will help you, help you. So I'm going to kind of give you how, how can you put this all together? So we're, this, let's say you want to, how are you going to take this and make it practical, what we talked today? Well, you're going to motivate yourself by using that Pomodoro do timer, right? You're going to take, I'm like, I'm going to get a couple of these things. I'm going to spend 25 minutes looking at this app or looking at this program. Then you're going to say, well, you know what? I'm going to remind myself in my calendars to get into that planning and get the steps of planning. And, and if you're not techie, you get in your, your little rocket notebook and keep track. Uh, you, when you're studying, you can use your rocket notebook for that. You can put, make, you, you create a notebook in whatever you like, in Evernote, Bear, Google Keep, or OneNote for your sermon or your sermon series. And, you, and what, say, but James, I'm not a pastor. Do you do things in your life that you have to organize? Do you do things in your life that you have to keep track of? Do you have a lot of information? If you're planning an event, you can do the same thing with that. Use it to keep everything together. Okay, so let's say you're studying. You got one note for all your sermon notes. Now you begin to study. You can look at, you check out your app, Logos app. You can use your eSword. You can check Precept Austin, which I forgot, which I included in there too. Uh, CCLL websites. You get stumped. You can go to gotquestions.org. Um, you're done studying. You want to know what other preachers and teachers thought about it, go to oneplace.com. Um, then you start advertising your series, right? Now that you got some fancy, snazzy ways to share your, your stuff, you got paint.net, you got the size of what it needs to be, um, your Facebook header, so you can start, hey, Wednesday night, I'm going to put a picture up, something that grabs attention from our Wednesday night series or Sunday. Um, plan your service, get your free worship slides ready to go, advertise your service on version. And when it's time to go, 
live stream it on face, Facebook using your Facebook Live setup. And after it's all said and done, you gather your sermon materials and that you have, put it in all the places that you can use it, blog with it, do something with it, get creative with it, use the Creative Commons website, and let God work.